It sounds quite simple and it's not difficult, but just make sure you really aerate that and you get it properly mixed. A good rule of thumb is when you are kind of looking down in the bowl, you don't want to see little bits of clear streak. That's just the, the whites that didn't properly get mixed in. And what that will show, how many people here have ever made scrambled eggs? And when you look at them on the plate, you're seeing like white bits. That's really just whites that didn't really get super emulsified and properly blended. It's not a bad thing, but really spend the time to get this custard mixture put together. Okay. Sorry. Now we're gonna add a little salt, just a tiny bit of salt. Why? Why, Meg? It's a sweet recipe. Why are you adding salt? Oh yeah, what is that? Salt bay? Bam! Bam. <laughs> why do we add salt? Now it's gonna be so salty. Why is why do we add salt? Sweet, why? Balance. We wanna add a little bit of balance. Salt actually brings out the flavors. So when you do anything that's sweet, adding a little pinch of salt is gonna just bring those flavors out. It's not as one note. Next up, we're gonna add a little bit of brown sugar. This might blow your minds. So are you ready for this one? Do you all know what brown sugar is? Well, that wasn't fun. What is it? Thank you. Brown sugar is white granulated sugar with molasses. So if you're ever in a pinch, you can make your own. The reason we're going to put a little brown sugar in this is because it's a dessert French toast. It's also French toast and we want to have a little bit of sweetness. So I did about a teaspoon of brown sugar. So good. You can use white. No big deal. Don't have that. Shot of maple syrup. Totally works. Little squeeze of honey. Little, uh, chai honey like you can go any route with that vanilla a little bit of vanilla we want to go there we go that's good we're going about a teaspoon teaspoon and a half okay hold on oh my god it smells so good you guys it smells now it smells like eggnog now it legit smells like eggnog for the holidays um so we've got six eggs we've got about a cup of cream we've got a pinch of salt a little bit of brown sugar some vanilla now these are the choices that you all have to make. We are adding either rum chata or Bailey's to the French toast custard. Which do we have? Y'all know it just means this one's probably gonna go in the filling, but we're gonna add some Bailey's. Um, we're not gonna add all of it, but we are going to add all of it. So <laughs> there she goes. This is where the cooking demo goes sideways. <laughs> oh my God. Um, okay, front row, come here. Someone in the front row, come smell this. I can't feed it to you because of the rules, but smell that. Right? Like how do we just have a bath in that right now? Okay, so we're gonna just put this over here. And we wanna talk about the griddle. So for the griddle, a griddle, Come on, fancy word for the frying pan, where you've got an induction burner. So my induction burner is really awesome. Totally recommend these, especially great in the summer if you are not wanting to use your stove. They heat up like almost immediately. Frying pan, nice heavy bottom frying pan. We're gonna put it over medium heat. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of butter. There is no judgment in this room for this. We've already used cream. We've got Bailey's, we've got brown sugar, so there's no turning back now. We're gonna add some butter. Could you use um, oil? You could. You could use a little oil if that's your uh, fat of choice and you don't wanna use the butter, that's okay. But I recommend using a neutral oil. So you want to use something that doesn't have a lot of flavor. So I wouldn't necessarily go the um, like olive oil route. You don't want it to take on those flavors. Grapeseed is a really good one. Um, avocado is good. Vegetable oil is fine. So we're going to get that heating, medium heat. And we're going to choose, today I have just like really great cobs, bread. It's white. It's sliced kind of thick. 
I also have a challah bread here. Um, now, if this were at home and I were doing this at home, I would love this bread simply because it's beautiful. It's like brioche it's eggy, it's a little sweet, it's so good. But for the purpose of today and tonight, what I'm doing with you guys, I'm gonna use just the regular white bread because I want it to be uniform in size and I want it to be square. You'll see why in a moment. So let's get that soaking. This doesn't have to soak. Oh, yes. <laughs> sounded very creepy. Um, it doesn't have to soak for a long time. You wanna give it a couple of turns. The, what we don't necessarily wanna have is to have this beautiful like piece of French toast that looks incredible. And then we go to cut into it and only the very top layer has the eggy and then you know like half we're nodding like halfway through it's it's just bread which is fine but you do want it to be fairly soaked through but you don't want it to be like a sopping wet sponge so a couple turns in the custard you could add cinnamon to this you could add a pinch of nutmeg you could add different extracts like if you wanted to do like almond or caramel or oh but there's baileys in here so we're gonna get three going in the pan. Of course, if you're making this for, um, you know, a larger group than just doing one to show, um, you definitely could, someone said you can do this on a sheet pan. I've not done it before, but you can do it in the oven. I'm seeing a couple people nodding. You can literally take a sheet pan, you can put your bread, you can soak it all, you can spray it down and you can bake it in the oven, which is like a fun way. I do, we do sheet pan pancakes, which is a fun way. So we're going medium heat. I am gonna put, I think my lid's gone. I'm just gonna leave this going here. We'll put the heat up a little. We're gonna watch this. We want this to cook both sides, griddle, deliciousness. We may be adding a little more butter to the pan as it begins to cook. But while that's doing its thing, we need to make the filling. How many fans of Nutella do we have here tonight? It's so good. So we're not only using Nutella, but because this is like Italy meets France, we're doing a version of a, a, a filling that we're gonna kind of put throughout the French toast. So we're just using Nutella, awesome, delicious. We've all had it, we like it. How many people here have had, I want, I always want to say mascarpone, but technically the R is in the second syllable. So mascarpone, mascarpone. How many of you have had this before? Okay. It's about a mortgage payment for one jar. It's so expensive, but I'll tell you it's worth every penny. It's about 14 or $15 but it's an Italian super smooth cream cheese. Some say it's a little bit sweetened. I don't get a much sweetness from it, but it's glorious. Now you absolutely could use regular cream cheese, but, or you could use ricotta as well, but we're gonna go in and we're gonna use the good stuff. So for this portion, I want everyone to, um, this is 475 grams, which is two cups. We're not gonna use the whole thing just because the bowl's not that big. So we're just gonna do like about a cup's worth. By the way, this is so delicious. If you ever make um, homemade like biscuits, oh my gosh, ridiculous. Okay, let's check. We're coming along here, so now we're gonna get in some Nutella. Come on, this is ridiculous. Like, <laughs> do it, bam! <laughs> right? Oh, I am so tempted. All right, so we've put in like, you know, probably a good half to three quarter, blah, 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 about a half a cup of Nutella. And because that's not enough, we're gonna add a little bit of rum chata, knowing full well that we are now mixing rum and Irish whiskey, but we're okay with that because we're just putting a little bit of this in, only enough to kind of smooth it out. So for this, we need 
the big guns. By the way, not sponsored. I know people say this isn't a sponsored post, but this no plug KitchenAid is the best investment I've ever spent. So highly recommend. So here we go. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, I'm so excited, right? I'm so happy. You guys, this is I'm so happy. So we're really gonna whiz this together until it is super, super creamy. The cream cheese does tend to have a little bit, because it is a cream cheese product, it has a little bit of grit to it. Oh, she needs to be up a little higher here. Oh yeah. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but this is starting to smell amazing. So here we go, let's get back in here. A little pinch of salt, a little goes a long way. You don't really need to add vanilla. We're not trying to really totally change the flavors. We really want that creaminess. We want uh, the creaminess. We want the chocolate, the hazelnut. If you're feeling like you need more. I, I can't. I can't. That's. I can't. You guys, it tastes like. Nutella cheesecake. It tastes like Nutella cheesecake. Like the, this probably is Nutella cheesecake at this point. So really you're seeing it become a little more pale. The more air we whip into it, not only the smoother does it get, but it gets a little aerated here, deliciousness. This is always the, the gamble when you go like this. But it like, oh, it's like, how far can you lift it out before it starts to spray all over? Um, right? Like the beaters, exactly. So there, that can set us, is that what somebody said? <laughs> I know, I'm like, worst mom ever. I'm not handing any of you the beater. Okay, so I'm gonna actually flip this now and then I'm gonna flip it a second time. Now, some people are of the feeling of don't flip your French toes twice, but we're, for the purpose of showing you, I wanna get that caramelization to happen and I'm actually gonna do something even crazier once this griddles on this side for a little bit and that's to sprinkle a little brown sugar onto the butter. So we are literally like every layer we can add sweet and decadence and flavor. Remember, this is desserty at this point. You don't want to put too much sugar because there is molasses in it. You don't want that to really burn, but we're keeping an eye on it, so we're good. So while that side cooks, now we need to talk about how do we get this and this all put together in a fabulous way. And that's where we're gonna do some piping. How many bakers do we have in the house? Some bakers. How many piping bag people do we have? Are you guys like, oh, so now you will all judge me. No, um, piping bags are great. And if you don't have one, just use a storage bag, like a Ziploc, cut the corner, super easy. Little quick tip, put your hand down in, grab a glass, put your hand down in the glass and then Pardon? Yeah, and then down it goes. So essentially we're like lining, like lining a can, but we're lining this, and it makes it really easy for us to get that filling out of the bowl and down into the piping bag. Turn that up a little. So here we go. You don't even have to be very careful with it at this point. Um, we always wanna also like kind of finish everything by hand, even though the mixer's fabulous. Let's get in there with a spatula and just sort of, oh, so good. I'm like distracted by the, it's gorgeous. All right. What does it smell like up there? Anything? Can you smell butter, sugar? A little bit? It smells like happiness, is that what you said? It really does. Okay, a little bit more. You might not be able to smell too much up there. All right. The cool thing about using a glass is you can literally like use the edge of the glass to like scrape it, get it right off the spatula. So it makes piping so fun and easy. So now that it's in your glass, you can leave it. You can kind of pull the sides up. Eventually we are gonna pull those sides up. Give it like a shimmy shake, get it down a little bit and then we're gonna cut the tip of it. But for now, let's go back, take a look. A little bit more griddled here. 
going to add a little touch more butter and I am going to turn the heat up. All right, so some more egg facts. I asked this in the other rooms and I'm curious. I don't think I asked you guys yet. Do we have egg eaters in this room? Yeah? Give it up for eggs. All right, how many people here, how many, any families, any individuals here eat more than one dozen eggs per week? or go through more than one dozen. Couple hands in the air. Anyone here more than two dozen eggs? Oh, we've got some hands up. I, I see that you're not pointing at yourself, you're pointing at the person beside you. So is there a story we need to know? Just big egg fans at the back? Yeah, just like them, all good. Part of a regular morning. They're so good, They're really they really are in so many ways like just a complete food. They're so easy. They're great for snacks. They're, uh, we, we love them and, and it's fun to kind of use them in so many, there we go, so many different applications. Now, I wanna get color on this, but I don't want the color to be so, so dark because again, we're keeping it desserty, we're keeping it fun and we want it to be cooked through and caramelized, but at the same time, we don't need it to be like dark, dark, dark. So you may need to adjust your heat slightly all I smell is caramel and butter. So good. All right, so I'm gonna take this out of the pan in just about 20 seconds, and I'm gonna show you how we, how I like to plate it, dessert style. You guys ready? We good? All right, so cutting board, important. Have a cutting board in front of you. I'm gonna turn this off. We're gonna take one out. Can everyone see okay? Now, on one hand, super easy. We take it out, we stack it, we fill it, we pipe stuff, everything's great. We're going dessert style. So we're gonna go fancy pants on this one. So this is a really cool, it's a trick that chefs use. It's a trick that you see on cooking shows. It's just a method on how we can take something that might not be perfect kind of like life. How do you kind of like cover up the mistakes and fix the edges and kind of make elevated, if you will. So for this, what we're going to do is we're going to take the piece. It's raging hot, but I'm okay with that. And we're going to take a cutter. Now this is like a three inch round, either a biscuit cutter or a cookie cutter. This one happens to have like a sharper edge. And we're really just going to place it all the way through. So this is a really cool way that you can do um, oh my God, but who's gonna eat that? I know, I know, I know, I know. So there we go, there's one, super cute. We're gonna, I can show you with the second one. This one's a little sharper. This is like a biscuit cutter. Um, you don't wanna wait until this is like super, super cold, but maybe not go as hot as I'm going right now. But again, timing showing you and you can see how thick that bread was and then you can see when we cut it out it actually like isn't as thick so if you want to make this like full beautiful here we go with you know big stacked french toast tv style you absolutely can but for the purpose of the dessert we're going to show you in a bowl and we are going to take this, this is where we decide like who's the prettiest child. We're gonna put, <laughs> they're all pretty. We're gonna put this one at the bottom. You're good, you're just gonna be the anchor to the whole team. Okay, so at the bottom, here we are, and now we have our mascarpone. Now you need to suspend disbelief for the part of this. These are hot. This normally would be like more of room temperature. Again, it's a dessert, and if you were serving this to a big crowd, you'd probably make like a bunch of discs and serve it room temperature would be still very delicious because it's warm it is going to hit this and be a little melty so we're going to work quickly and you're going to ooh and ah as soon as it's finished and then as it starts to ooze out well that's just that's what happens okay give a little snip get in here and we're going to pipe we're going to move that okay so Piping, hold with one hand, twist. I don't want to twist too much because it'll start to come out. This hand is sort of your guide hand. We're just going to pipe. <laughs> you guys are amazing. Okay, here we go. 
We're not finished. We have some caramel popcorn. I know. <laughs> so we're gonna put a little popcorn because we want this baby to be so high and mighty. I'm so excited. Like, do you guys ever create, if you're cooks and you love to cook, do you ever cook something and it's so pretty, you're like, I think I might cry because it's that pretty. That's how I'm feeling. Okay. Oh my God, you guys, it's like, it's, it's Bailey's and butter and sugar. Oh, there we go. We're starting to droop. So we're going to go. We don't even have to pipe as much. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. A little bit of popcorn. She's holding in. We're fine. We got gotcha. you. We got gotcha. you. We got this. We got this. Now I sincerely feel like I'm a master chef again. She needs a hat. She needs a hat. She needs a hat. She, oh, she's falling. She's falling. We're gonna pipe a little tiny bit on the top. Just a little. We're gonna give her a little popcorn on the top. We're gonna put a little bit of, she's falling. She's had, she's at Telus Spark After Dark. Here we go. There's a little bit of mint. There she is, and ta-da. There's your number one. So again, again, we're gonna go room, we'll, we'll, we'll put her off to the side. We're gonna say room temperature. So get it at room temperature when we know that it's going to hold. Obviously, temperature differences here, but you get the idea. So how do we take a French toast, we let it come off the griddle, we let it sit for five or 10 minutes, room temp, then we can start to pipe. Another fun thing that you can do with the Nutella mascarpone is you can actually let it really chill because it's so squishy, it's not gonna harden up to the point where you can't pipe it. So if these are room temperature and then this is definitely a little chillier, you will be able to assemble these without the slippage. But you know what, if you only look at it from there, she's fine. There she is. So there it is, guys. Some Nutella French toast for you. Thank you so much. We don't need to see her like this. Um, I have one uh, dishcloth.